Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and today we're going to be taking a look at a graphics card. This graphics card I purchased for the Optiplex, uh, though we're not going to be using the Optiplex in this video. Instead I want to try it out, make sure it's working and everything, you know maybe some, play some games on it, um, just to make sure everything's fine before I make a video on the Optiplex, so that's what we're going to be doing today. And the graphics card we're going to be using is this uh, AMD Radeon RX 550. It's a four gigabyte card with DisplayPort and HDMI. And I specifically chose this card because it is a single slot, low profile card, which is what the Optiplex is only able to use unless you want to hang a riser cable out of your case, like what we did with the 3060. And also it doesn't require any external PCIe power, which is something that the power supply doesn't have. We'd have to have a separate power supply, just like what we had to do with the 3060 to power it. Uh, I purchased this card at Micro Center for, I think, $85. Wasn't the most expensive offering they had, but it was for the Optiplex. So I don't want to spend that much. And a lot of the cards they were selling were, were 1 gig, half gig. Uh, they had some 2 gig ones. Uh, but this one was under $100 and it was a 4 gig. At least 4 gigs may may run some of those games that we played. We'll have to see and we are going to be playing a couple of them in this video on a uh, Windows system. So let's get this out of the box and uh, take a look at it. So here we have our RX 550. It's a pretty small card, very simple heat sink. As I mentioned before, we have our DisplayPort and HDMI. Just a very, very simple card. The card also comes with a full height bracket, which we are going to have to install because the system I'm using does not have support for the low profile. So we're going to have to install this. Let's get the uh, bracket installed and then we'll install it into the system. Uh, something I also noticed is the quality of this card is not exactly the best. The screws are a little bit stripped. Uh, not this one, but the one up here is a little bit stripped. We're going to take these screws off and we're going to install our little full height bracket. So there we have our full height bracket. So let's get this thing installed and um, see if it runs. But before we continue, I do want to kind of see what we're working with. So we're here on the website Tech Power Up. We're here on their GPU database. Now, something to mention before we look through this. Uh, now, we do have to keep in mind that a lot of these specs here are completely based on the base model RX 550, that being a two gig model that apparently also is a dual slot card. So we have a low profile four gig model. So some of this stuff may or may not be completely accurate to what we have, but I'm pretty sure it's mostly the same outside of what VRAM we're using. So this card came out in 2017. So it's a lot newer than I was expecting. It is PCI Express 3.0 by 8. Their recommended gaming resolutions do not recommend uh, 1080p or 1440, though we're gonna try anyway. So without further ado, let's get this installed and uh, see how it fares. Okay, so this is the system we're going to be installing the RX 550 into. This is my gaming PC that I don't really use for gaming anymore and just used to uh, mess around with Linux. Funnily enough, I've recorded multiple videos about this PC, just never uploaded them, including the build process, which I gave up halfway through. Let's just take the card that's currently in there. Hopefully I can, because it's really hard to reach in there. All right, so I got the card out. So let's install the RX 550. Okay, make sure it's latched in there. Oh, I pushed the power button on accident. All right, so uh, let's move back to the computer and uh, check out what's going on. All right, so uh, I didn't realize this, but the game audio did not record. So we have no sound for the game. Also, for some reason, the microphone audio uh, for this section is completely unusable. So I'm just going to record a voiceover for it. The system specs uh, of this system. For the CPU, we are using an Intel i7-12700. And we are running 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM running at 5200 MHz. Once I booted the system, booted into Windows and everything, the card was not appearing on Task Manager. After I waited a couple, like a minute after, it randomly just recognized it and uh, kind of fixed everything. See in the beginning of here, we have this really zoomed in look here so it figured something out and seemed to work fine but i installed the driver just in case 
So after I installed the driver, I restarted the system, and now we can move on to our games. The games we're going to be playing are the same ones that we've played on the Optiplex, starting off with Doom. Now, this version of Doom is a little different than the other versions that we've played on the Optiplex, because when I recorded those videos, the Doom plus Doom 2 update hadn't happened yet. I think from what I've heard, they were running on a different game engine but there didn't seem to be any issues here i ran the game at max settings at 4k i think vsync was on so it was a smooth 60 fps throughout the entire game which i think was absolutely fine next we have half-life uh, once again maximum settings at 4k this time i turned vsync off so we were hitting 100 fps game ran just fine no issues whatsoever next we had jedi academy 90 fps in the menus i set the resolution to the highest resolution i could which is a very weird one and uh played the game and 90 fps for the entire time i was playing it so no issues here i did kill the guy i was supposed to be helping so uh that's where we end it here next we have half-life 2 and once again max out all the settings and set it to 4k uh, so for this video i decided to play root canal which is the third level in half-life 2 a lot more going on in some combat scenarios as well it seemed to be just fine it was running at 60 fps it was all fine and dandy until i turned the flashlight on and that dropped the frames down to the 30s now, this was the first game that I decided to uh, drop the resolution down. I dropped it down to 1440 and had kind of the same results, 60 FPS until I turned the flashlight on. And then I set it to 1080p with the flashlight on and everything ran just fine. So uh, Half-Life 2 works just fine if you set it down to 1080p. Next, we have Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now, I'm going to keep this short. Uh, the game did not run. Yes, we were able to get into the main menu, which was hitting around 80 FPS, but once we decided to select a mission and play it, it just crashed. I don't know what's up with that, so we'll just move on from there, and maybe one day we'll figure out what's going on. Uh, the next game we had was Elder Scrolls Oblivion. We started off with maximum settings at 4K. Game loaded just fine. It was running at 60 FPS until we started entering into areas with a lot of like grass and other geometry, as well as uh, some trees in the distance, and we're dropping down to around 40 to 30 FPS. I also noticed while using spells that the frame rate would drop pretty significantly. Uh, my guess is because the healing spell that I was using casts some light on the ground. But once I brought it down to uh, 1080p, it was a consistent 60 FPS throughout the rest of it. So Oblivion runs just fine at 1080p. Next game we have was Portal. A 4K max graphics. It wasn't the best, around 30 FPS. But same story as a lot of the other games. Set it to 1080p. And it was a consistent 60 FPS throughout the entire game. So next we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Now this game is a little strange because... For some reason, when I went into the settings to change the resolution to 4K, wouldn't allow me to. When I hit OK, it breaks everything, it breaks windows, you can't click or interact with anything, and you have to just sign out of your account and sign back in and you'll be fine. It's just broken. So I was kind of forced to play this at 1440 at max settings and uh, was able to play the training mission. Inside of the barracks, the frame rate was upwards of 100 but it was typically around 80 90 fps dropping down to 70 occasionally but as soon as i left and entered the training yard um the frame rate dropped to like 40 of course this being a not really populated area i'm pretty sure if, if you're in a more combative level it would probably lag even more now i do believe that setting it to 1080p would help and i'm pretty sure you could play the game at that resolution but unfortunately, I could not test that because it would just break everything. Maybe some other time I'll see what's up with it. But for now, we'll just have to move on. And lastly, we have Fallout 3. Once again, 4K at maximum settings. And the game seems to run okay. Uh, it's around 30 to 40 FPS, occasionally dropping down to 20. It's not exactly the most playable thing. It's a lot better than I was expecting on this card. And of course, if you drop it down to 1080p, 
uh, it's a more consistent 60 FPS. So um, Fallout 3 runs just fine. So I was going to play some more modern games like Counter-Strike or Fallout 4. Uh, but I decided not to because it would make the video a lot longer than it already is. Uh, maybe we'll do that in a different video. Uh, I do have some thoughts about this card, but before we talk about that, I do want to make sure everybody understands that this video is not a review on the RX 550. Uh, for one, it's a pretty old card, so it's pretty irrelevant. And also, I've not fully benchmarked or stress tested this card to its fullest extent. So if you are looking for a review on the RX 550, you're going to have to look elsewhere. There's probably tons of videos on YouTube that you can just search up RX 550 review and uh, find what you're looking for. Uh, but with that out of the way, let's talk about my thoughts. So going into this video, uh, my expectations for this card were very low. Wasn't expecting it to perform as well as it did. I was expecting this card to maybe run a few of the old games just fine and not really run any of the new stuff. But this card actually was able to run most of the games, the only exception being Star Wars Battlefront 2. I'm quite impressed with this sub $100 graphics card, and really am excited to see what it, how it runs in the Optiplex. But yeah, those are just my thoughts on it. Let me know your thoughts about this video, as well as the RX 550 in the comment section down below. Also, be sure to let me know what else you want to see on the channel. Also, be sure to check out the videos I have on the Dell Optiplex. I'll have the playlist linked at the end of the video as well as a video that youtube recommends as always thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time